Jazz sequence on the internet. This is Gary. He's binary. Gary on the internet. 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 And that's intro. Allison. <laughs> not the internet. We're not on the internet at all. Uh, and that's Allison, who is Allison Plus on the internet. And we are making a podcast about things that we don't know anything about. Uh, Gary is a uh, basketball recruiter for the first division or third division uh basketball league uh out of jacksonville and uh Alice- Don't root it back, <laughs> <laughs> and allison coincidentally is a rutabaga farmer um in in sunny sunny california currently are you are you having orange juice allison no i'm drinking coffee okay it's, because it's earlier here than i'm accustomed to recording <laughs> Yes, quite actually. <laughs> it's a big time zone. Hours. Here. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay because, like, I went to bed ridiculously early last night because I'm a wuss when it comes to travel and time change, apparently, but <laughs> zonked out at like nine, if that. So, time <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> Hi. This is Gary Jude. Would, I don't think Jude has made it to a podcast I was before. Gonna say. Uh, Jude has definitely appeared audibly in podcasts, and usually I have to open the door and let him out. Yeah, for those only following along via audio, um, there's a, a really adorable dog now on the screen that wants wants added attention and screen time. <laughs> <laughs> he just fell off the couch. <laughs> but probably Not the smartest dog. Just pulled it off and pretended like it was totally not happen. Like. I intended to do that the whole time. Yep. So the topic oh. for this week, I'll just dive right in. Dive right in. Is Gorlin's sign. Gorlin's sign. Gorlin. Because it sounds just, it sounds mystical, I know. Gorlin sign. Gorlin's sign. G-O-R-L-I-N. <laughs> Apost- yeah. Apostrophe. <laughs> Apostrophe S. Sometimes just a singular, Gorlin sign. I've seen it alternated. So. See, that's, that's oh. disappointing because Gorlin, Gorlan, G-O-R-L-A-N, is, I believe, a place, uh, a, a, a former tower or castle in the series The Ranger's Apprentice. Mm. So, because there's a book called The Ruins of Gorlin. Um, so that's disappointing that I couldn't just smack it right up. <laughs> I mean, I'm disappointed in you. Unless I'm spelling it incorrectly and then all this all is lost. I'm I'm sure that's not the case. <laughs> um Gorlin sign. Obviously it's a sign that says Gorlin lives here. <laughs> anymore. Orland sign says no soliciting. Return yeah. to center. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Squeaky door. <laughs> What's the word for the, is it um, a Foley artist? The, the person who does all the yeah. sound effects for him? That's, yeah. Um, that's Gary's true calling. Squeaky when door. I, when I, um, <laughs> I did a, I did a interim so my uh the university that we went to um aaron and i uh had you know fall semester and spring semester and then an interim semester that that spanned like january to february and you could take a class during there or you could just have a long break and so i usually i usually did an interim class um and one of my interim classes that i did was on video production Mm -hmm. um and so like we learned about filmmaking and we use actual equipment because he was a video production guy. Um, so he had lots of like professional like videography equipment. Um, and then we did uh, one of the things, one of our projects was to recreate a scene from a movie 
and including like not just filming it but and but also like doing the audio doing the soundtrack um editing it all together and foley was part of it um so i got to do well i didn't do any of the foley but i was also the editor um so i got to record the foley and then edit it into the um into the soundtrack awesome. that sounds like fun yeah i um i'm gonna use this opportunity uh because it reminded me of a thing um there's a podcast my kids listen to called Story Pirates um, from Gimlet Media. I highly recommend it. Um, it's it's just fun, like improv podcast based on stories children have submitted to this show. Hmm. And there's one character I can't remember who, but every time someone like every time there's like a community gasp, like <gasps> this person goes gasp, and it, <laughs> it it cracks me up every time. And I feel like that's what I was doing with Squeaky Door. Um, <laughs> Which leads me to another segue. Um, we don't promote other podcasts on this podcast, not because we <laughs> don't like from other podcasts. I know that is, I, I guess that's what I was saying is we, it's not a rule. I just, we don't because we're too busy. Um, Doing our own podcast. Trying to remember, the, trying to remember yeah, what the name of the topic was. Today. Gorman's sign? Gorlin's sign. Gorlin. Gorman, Gorlin. I was close. One letter off, I guess. Um, but I was on a podcast. Um, oh, no. It was just released. I was I was on a podcast a few weeks ago. So um, WordPress Square One, you can check out. I feel obligated to say listen to WordPress Square One because they were kind enough to have me on, and they let me talk about binary jazz. So. Yay! Cool. Yay! Yeah, maybe we'll have one more listener. Um, you should uh, uh, and they will as well. Um, you should let me know how it sounds because I haven't listened to the episode. I, I. Because you don't listen to podcasts. I don't. Well. I don't. You don't I listen, listen to podcasts. To you don't listen to our podcast. You don't listen to your own podcast. I don't want to hear myself talk. <laughs> well, I don't want to um, hear myself talk either. I just want to hear you guys talk again. And that is why. Oh, one moment. There's going to be a beeping if I don't turn that off. Oh, boy, will there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did listen to a podcast. Um, last week, I came to you from uh, beautiful Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Mm. Um, and then I had to drive home Friday night. Friday night? I don't know what night I drove home. Um, but it's like a five hour drive from there to Jacksonville. And so I grabbed um, a podcast and I'm not gonna remember the name of it, damn it. But it was about um, um, like people living in a dome, like as a Mars experiment, housing experiment. It was eight people? Eight people lived in a dome for like a year with no contact with the outside world except through delayed communication as you would expect were you to be on Mars. Um, and it was like the drive was just perfect that I could listen to every episode back to back. So I got to binge the entire thing. Um, it's fantastic. So maybe Google some combination of those words to figure out what the title is. Isn't it know. called The Habitat? Oh God, you're right it is. Yes, yeah. called The Habitat. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if, I don't know that it had the sticking power, like if I were listening to it week to week, if I would do it. But for a long drive like that, it was, it's pretty good for the continuity and remembering who people were. And um, hey, Google, what's the habitat? Oh, silly dog. That is not the right answer. No, <laughs> but I mean, door. Door. Not wrong. it is a habitat, not the habitat. It is a answer. Yes. Uh. There, there was a lot of conversation about people pairing off, which I found like kind of on the nose and like an obvious topic. I wanted to like learn more about like some of the things that happen to your brain. And they touched on that somewhat. Hmm. And now I want to spend a year in a on Mars space. Uh, I mean, the rest of my life on Mars would be good. Yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Seriously, like if somebody called next week, was like, hey, uh, 30 days, we're going to launch you to Mars. Like, I'll pack. I wonder what I'm going to need. <laughs> I wonder what I'm going to need. Is there a packing list involved? Yeah. If there was an application for like a habitat type situation, would you apply for something like that? That wasn't actually on Mars, but that was like. Uh, right. Yeah. I kind of looked into it a little after listening to the podcast. Right. Um, and it's like an ongoing thing. Like every few months they like fire off another group out there in Hawaii where they're doing this thing. Um, 
but I, I, it would be a tough conversation to have with Rhonda, right? Like, mm-hmm. hey, mm-hmm. I would like to go be uh, I'm 30 go minutes away by communication, only by email. I'll pretend to be on Mars in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. For a year. For a year. Yeah. It'd be a tough sell. And I, I, oh, man. I don't know that I would want, I would want to pretend. Like, I think Mars is an easier sell, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally is. Totally is. Yeah, absolutely. I could be one of the first humans on Mars versus like, I could be part of like an experiment that helps us figure out like how the first human on Mars will succeed or fail. Yeah. Like it's, it's a little different. Although either one sounds like amazing. <laughs> so um, Tom, the CEO of Human Made recently started doing sort of an internal podcast uh, where he answers questions submitted by other people in the company and then answers them. Um, and he did his first one, I don't know, like last week or something. And it and he invited people to, to go on the Zoom call with him and, and but nobody did. Um so it's just him asking himself questions and then answering the questions. Um, I love that. That's like a weird internal monologue. <laughs> it is, it is. Um so I I offered to be the person asking the questions next time. Um because it, I think that it could benefit from having at least one other human being there. Um, even if like the questions are, are pre-written, even if he knows the questions going into it, just having some opportunity to kind of bounce off things and play off, you know? Yeah. And like, and he also like pointed out like, you know, I might be going completely off topic and not realize it, like going off on a tangent, not actually answering the question. Um, yeah. Somebody needs to pull the handbrake. Yeah. Somebody does. Or a clarifying question that kind of hones it in. Right, yeah. Also, just otherwise, because I feel like otherwise, I just stream of consciousness, you would just rhythm out and spiral, and then all of a sudden be like, well, that was eventual, but completely different way. (laughs) We've 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 reached our three-hour limit on this podcast, so. (laughs) (laughs) Might run out of disk space soon. Feel free to submit some of the questions from Binary Jazz. Any of those? Um, any of the listener questions? See, see what his his hot take is on. Yeah, sauerkraut. Yeah, <laughs> there. Um, yeah, well, there's some that there's some that. So one of the questions was, the, I mean, there's several questions that would be applicable to like any situation. So there's some that are specific to the company. Um, one of the one of the ones that is sort of more general uh, is how do you feel about the state of the internet with companies such as Facebook, Amazon, Google dominating more and more? Uh, are we thinking about the implications of our work implementing on e- our work on implementing features that may infringe on usual privacy, such as ads, trackers, etc.? Oh wow! Yeah. See, that should be like that. Sh- that could be a, like a public blog entry. Yeah. Well, I, think I think a lot of I think a lot of these could. I mean, I think a lot of this stuff. And and honestly, like, I don't think he's you know ready to make it public. But it's not like it couldn't be public. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's probably some areas where he's talking more about specifically you know company things. But I don't know that like I mean he made it all about uh, transparency generally anyway. So it wouldn't be yeah. like. There's a couple of things I think we talk about uh, or that he talks about and that we talk about internally that haven't been announced publicly yet. Um, so those things might need to be dodged or avoided or something. But. Mm-hmm. So Gorland's uh, sign, uh, <laughs> Gorland's sign, uh, besides the sign saying Gorland lives here, <laughs> um, it, is, uh, it is a sun dog. It is, or something like a sun oh. dog. It is when you see a thing in the sky and it is, it's a sign. I wonder if um, Gorlin is like the father of uh, roadside marketing. No. So like the billboard is Gorlin's sign. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Or like Burma, Burma Shave. You know, like the Burma Shave signs? <laughs> like Gor- Gorlin. I mean, not that you remember first, them. Gorlin is yeah. the, first, uh, the first billboard company. So Gorlin's sign is, is a billboard. It, it, back in the day, it was like you could get like a Gorland sign or you could get like all the pretenders. Like it was like of higher quality to get yeah. the Gorland sign, you know? <laughs> um, I also think it has nothing to do with actual signs. I think that it is a, um, a visual indicator uh, for aviators 
when you're, you've reached like the point of something happening related to the sun and the atmosphere that mm. inverts the appearance of the horizon. Hmm. That sounds dangerous for an aviator. <laughs> it does. That's why, have, that's why you have an indicator, the Gorlin sign, <laughs> to show you that, no, that's the ground and that's the sky. Yeah. Um, Gorlin sign. <laughs> right, Gorlin the sign. one you're falling toward is the one ground you want to be hitting. Sky. The Gorlin sign is when you have a sort of, um, when you have an image burned on your, on your eyes and you close your eyes and you still see that thing, that's, the, that's a Gorlin sign. Oh, yeah, like when you're retina. When yeah. You, um, so... So, for example, like during an eclipse, if you were the president and wanted yeah, to observe it, right? Gorlin sign for the rest stare, of your life. You'd stare at the sun, sun, and then you'd close your eyes, and you'd see the, you'd be able to enjoy the, the eclipse. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you had to bring it down. You had to bring Trump into the podcast. Um. I've been watching a lot of Tiny Desk concerts. Have we talked? Did we talk about this last week? We talked about Tiny. We have talked about Tiny Desk. I have not stopped since last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, though. It's a good. It's a good rabbit hole to go down. I don't it know. It is. Like... And there's a few that I've watched several times now. Have you seen the and Reggie I... Watts one? I have not. That's probably one of the best ones. At least, I mean, I haven't seen a ton, but I mean, Reggie Watts is amazing, and he he does a Tiny Desk. It's also amazing. And it, the the spectrum of like what styles have tiny desk concerts is just amazing. Yeah. And NPR is great for, for, for music generally because they just don't have genre distinctions. Mm -hmm. I watched, um, is it Sarah and Tegan or Tegan and Sarah? Tegan I don't and know. Sarah. Thank <laughs> you. I, um, I learned many things from that episode um, or that recording. Um, that one was recorded the day before the 2016 election. So it was very um, hopeful. Uh, yeah, Positive. it was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a. Oh, I remember I also, right before the 2016 election. Those were the days. The I felt time. hopeful too once. The more um, innocent time. The. Uh, so I, I like Tegan and Sarah. Obviously, I've heard Tegan and Sarah, but I haven't really paid attention. And I thought Tegan and Sarah was like a Canadian pop band. Um, and I thought one of them was a dude. <laughs> um, so then I was confused when they were twins. I'm like, wait, what the hell is going on? I didn't know. Then I had to look up their Wikipedia. Yeah, so I had to look at their Wikipedia, which also I've learned a lot about music just in general from having to Google, like, who the hell is that? <laughs> or where's that? I didn't know Tegan was a girl. I just, I just didn't think. I mean, obviously, that's what it came down. Like, it was a Borat moment for me. Like, I was like, it was cultural. Like, I was learning the way a different culture operates. Like, normal. except that other culture is also your culture. Yeah, is is obviously like yeah, Western North American yeah culture. Yeah, I just right. not paying attention to it. Yeah. I thought it was a pop band with like a Justin Bieber kind of voice. <laughs> so I was wrong. Learned a lot. Now you've been indoctrinated into the world, and now you yeah. probably know way more about Tegan and Sarah from their Wikipedia page than most people. <laughs> I do. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I feel like on Jeopardy, I'd probably have a fighting chance if the top, if the column was oh. Tegan and Sarah. I could <laughs> probably get two or three right. Yeah. That's how you know you've made it. If not only if you're you're not just a question, you're a, you're the category. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I would never be happy if I were just a question. You got to be the question, <laughs> or um, just an answer. What I, other episodes I, did you repeatedly watch for Tiny Desk? Um, there is an old one. Um, Beirut is the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I love Beirut. I, I, I just love the opening song in the and on on that concert. Like it, it starts and I'm like immediately sucked in. Is it? Um, um, see, I know the video because I there's a song that that they did that was popular, and I watched the video and I got the and I found illicitly the album and I down and I listened to it on repeat many many times. Um, there's but the video has like and i don't think the video has really anything to do with the song so like describing the video isn't going to help you identify the song but it involves a guy who's like had a really shitty life and then decides to like just jump in the ocean um <laughs> to get away from everything i guess like, i'm just gonna live in the ocean now it all comes back to water doesn't it so there's there's this like slow motion uh scene of him stripping off his clothes on the beach 
and running to the ocean. Hmm. Hmm. I can get behind that. I have an understanding there. <laughs> get, back, get back to the ocean. This will be like an incredible closing sequence when Allison just sprints out the door, shedding clothing behind her towards the ocean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Much better than our usual. We're like, I hope that the last frame is us laughing like we thought it was. And it turns out to be like us like taking a breath before we laugh. So we all kind of look like we're horrified for a brief moment. When well, in fact, we're all we're about to go, gasp. <laughs> <laughs> in unison. <laughs> Yeah, squeaky door. <laughs> oh, squeaky door footsteps, creaky. <laughs> I learned about oh, wow. uh, I learned about I Sri Lanka on uh, Wikipedia uh, this week um, because I'm going to Sri Lanka in, in uh, next month, um, and I thought that you know besides a, a, a blip on the map, I should know something about the place that I'm going because I know nothing about the place that I'm going. So I I, I want to watch um, famous video or famous movie scenes with like instead of Foley over it, I want like spoken word as to what is actually happening. Like okay. dinosaur growling. Like, let's make that happen. Okay. Who, who, do we, who do we know that can do this? Uh, Police siren, screeching tires. I mean, it sounds a lot like MST3K. It sounds like, it sounds like the guys that do MST3, MST3K could probably pull that off. I feel like we need to like pull the audio completely, replicate over the spoken, like the dialogue, and then also replicate like helicopter thumping in the distance. That that yeah. Wind. That would Barking work. Dog. That would work. But you need to have an underabundance of voice actors doing the parts, so that you have the same person doing multiple different roles, and then their voices need to also not be very distinct, so yeah. that everybody just sounds like that guy, and every like all the all the female characters sound like that person, and all the male characters sound like that person. <laughs> It sounds like a very yeah. expensive venture. <laughs> really, I feel like this sounds like a night of like a few beers and like, <laughs> like playing it over and over and over again with just like a no one. It has to be all in one take. It has to be like I don't think it could. I I like that idea. Chip, I'm gonna have to call someone. Possibility. Else. You do like Back to the Future. You find the script. You read. You read through it as they're doing the lines, and it's all in one take. I mean, even if you just did like a minute. A video. It would be hysterical. <laughs> it'd have to be a minute because no one watch more than a minute. I wouldn't. That's true. It'd get old after a minute. And it's your idea, and you wouldn't watch more than. <laughs> I don't listen to myself on podcasts either. So why would why would I start listening to myself overdubbing audio on a movie? Oh goodness. That's Gorland sign right there. When you have a great idea that you don't want to participate in, it's Gorland <laughs> sign. <laughs> I had no idea I was so intimately familiar with it. Yeah. <laughs> All the ideas. <laughs> but wait, to, to go back to Sri Lanka, is there yes. a, a nugget or like something that you've discovered so far that you were like, huh? Or is it just like, because you kind of started from a clean slate, so. Yeah, well, I mean, there's several things. Uh, it is 70% uh, Muslim, 70% uh, Buddhist. Um, it is one of the places in the world that um, they that it is believed that sort of life kind of came from like it's one of the oldest uh, civilizations um they are the oldest asian democracy um they've had a democracy wow. for longer than any other asian country um how long is that because i want to say, in... say like 50 years okay or ish uh they relatively recently recently within the last 15 years uh came out of a uh, civil war that lasted 26 years. Um, it was all about like ethnic cleansing and shit. Um, and they have some really amazing looking uh, like ancient like wall paintings and, and temples and things. Um, like, and, and I mean like Buddhist things, which is like, like I've seen like pagan things, I've seen like old churches, I've seen, you know, like mm -hmm. like ancient Buddhist things is is a really fascinating idea to me. Um they believe that I think they I think I read that they they think that Buddha lived there for a period of time. Um yeah. So I mean there's lots of really interesting things about about they have a really they're the they're the second largest exporter of tea. Um it's where Ceylon tea came from because the country used to be known as Ceylon. Um Go ahead. What else do they export? Um, 
they growing a lot of palms? I can't remember. There is there is something else that was big on the list, um, and I can't remember now. There's a little there's a little graphic if you go to the Wikipedia page. And <laughs> You're like, there's a great website. W I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's a good like rundown of things to learn about Sri Lanka, though. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, so it seems like a pretty I'm excited for you. Yeah, it seems like a pretty interesting place. I'm hoping to and being being Buddhist, I feel like like. Um, dietary it's going to be like super easy to find like compatible food yeah so yeah that's my hope uh, predominantly buddhist yeah yeah <clears throat> that the that the food would not be too too difficult i know that i mean it's an island so there's a lot of seafood but you cut out the seafood and they're going to be i mean there's more than just me that's vegan and there's more than just me that's gluten-free so well i was just thinking in general like that like buddhists yeah. are are very clearly um uh what was i gonna say i guess like very clearly like you'd, you'd find like a very big overlap with with people that are vegan and buddhist mm -hmm. like there's a logical yeah well, i mean indian indian food thai food um himalayan food like are usually yep. go-to's for us for getting you know vegan fare yeah i can't imagine that himalayan restaurants sell a lot, a lot of yak to anyone <laughs> Well, it is now the time where we get to find out what uh, Gorland's sign actually is. I was actually going to, there's one more thing, there's one more thing I was going to suggest that it might be, and I might have forgotten it. Um, yes, I did. <laughs> That's <false. laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> and on that note. And on that note. Um, so in Gorland's sign is the ability to touch your nose with your tongue, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which 10% of people in the general population can do, apparently. I'm not one of those 10%. Um, but there's also, there's, um, this connective tissue disorder called Ehler Ehlers-Danos <sighs> And 50% of people with that tissue disorder have Gorlin sign, which is interesting to me. Um, mm. But yeah, anyway, so. Wow. Does it have to do with, with the, yeah, the connecting tissue under your tongue that holds your tongue in place? And like, if there's less of that, then you have yeah, the then, ability to stick your tongue out and be Yeah, something. and so it's like, it's obviously not like a. Um, your fremula, right? <laughs> it's like the the um it's not a i was gonna say a, a symptom obviously but like the fact that 50 percent of people can do it it's one of the things that they i guess also often use for diagnosis as part of the whole combined thing because that'd be a cool i mean as far as doctors it's good that'd be a cool one like i need you to try and touch your nose with your tongue please <laughs> it's, not, it's not the make or break obviously of the diagnosis but um it's helpful it's helpful in that they don't have to test for other, the other connective tissue stuff, which is less, less awesome for the syndrome, I guess. Mm. And it's named for Robert J. Gorlin, for whatever that's worth. Okay. And, and it's a sign because it is an indicator of a possible problem, but possibly not. Yeah. Okay. Because well, like 10% 10, 10 of the population that can do it, obviously, it's, it's not... Yeah. Not warranting much. Hmm. Well, we do have one listener question left in, in the queue. Uh, as always, you can submit questions on uh, Twitter at Binary Jazz or by going to binariesjazz.us. Scroll down. There's a contact form. There's also a separate contact page. It's the same form. It goes to the same place. Just send us questions because we want your questions so that we don't have to uh, make stuff up for the last 10 minutes of our show. Are there um, any questions that are out of bounds? No. no. Well, yeah. maybe personal. I mean, stuff. you can ask anything you want. Yeah, you can ask. We might not answer them. <laughs> yeah. We might just act offended. Yeah. Or actually be offended, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> or actually be offended. Um, this one is, is probably not offensive. Uh, what do you feel is an appropriate length for fingernails and toenails? I'm having an argument with my friend who insists that toenail length serves a purpose but he keeps complaining that his socks rip all the time. And I'm like, buddy, clip your nails. How do you all keep your nails? Do you, ha do, you do any kind of manicure, pedicure routine? 
So I wear sandals first a lot. of all, yeah. First of all, I would like to say that yes, toenails do serve a purpose, but clip your nails, buddy. <laughs> I'm on the clip your buddy's nail bandwagon too. I agree. Yeah, uh, socks are are. are I mean, really, the reason the, the socks purpose, with your talons. The purpose of of nails on on your hanging on your from feet, trees with your feet. Well, the purpose of nails on your feet is pretty much superseded by shoes. Because, like, evolutionarily, we didn't have coverings on our feet. We just walked around barefoot all the time, and we grew these, like, intense, like, calluses on the bottoms of our feet. And, and that was to prevent your toes from being smashed by rocks, I guess, or something. But we wear shoes now, so clip your freaking nails. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I find that my toenail care routine is that one nail starts bothering me. Just do all of them. Be done with it, you know? You can't I, go back to the park. They're going to It'll hurt. It'll hurt. It'll hurt. It'll hurt. That's it. My nail clipping routine uh, is highly dependent upon uh, how much I'm injuring others. Um, <laughs> if it gets to the point where they're too long and I'm, I'm injuring others, then it's time <laughs> to clip them. <laughs> Chris, I would suspect that you have like substantial, not like length, but like, like sturdy toenails. I would be disappointed if I looked at your toenails and they were not like thicker. How would you hypothesize that? I don't know. I just feel it from the way we communicate with each other. I, it's a dumb thing, right? But if I was thinking about your toenails, as I am right now, I think your toenails are thicker than mine. I mean, like a I lot, think, like notably thicker than mine. I, I mean, I like, think you're nice right. manly toenails. I, I think you're right. And that's what's kind of scary is why did you think that? <laughs> well, <laughs> and I guess like, I really like, I just define that as like a gender thing, like nice, thick, manly toenails. I don't really mean that, but nice toenails. Manly. I don't know why. I don't know. It's like a man with manly toenails. <laughs> Um, or is it like a, a dietary, like, we just assume you're, you're healthier than us? <laughs> yeah. No, I just think that <laughs> he, it, yeah, I just think the, the way his body metabolizes, a, a lot of it goes to his toe. toes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All, all, all that extra protein goes straight to my toenails. <laughs> yeah. I need, to cut, I, need, I need to cut back on, on tofu because, uh, you know, my toenails are getting too thick. <laughs> is it spelled T-O-F? T O E F U. I didn't know that. <laughs> they have tofu. tofu. <laughs> <laughs> on my fingernails, I'm embarrassed to say that I, um, whenever I'm playing a string instrument, I tend to like, oh, that's in the way, and I'll bite my nails, and so my hands are just disgusting. But I blame string instruments for that, especially string instruments that I need to change the strings on, like old weird stuff mm -hmm. that I don't play often enough to justify replacing the strings on. But the strings get like, ah, they feel nasty when they're old, right? really dry your fingers out more than like fresh new strings. I guess I'm restringing everything this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> like add that to the to-do list. I did a count one time on how many strings I had across all instruments and it was pretty stupid. <laughs> um, like it, I, I think if I, were, if I took like, well, let's figure it out. We have a minute. Um, <laughs> so two guitars is 12, right? Um, mandolin is eight, so it's to 20. Um, Ukulele, right, 24. Um, Trango has 10, so that's 34. Quattro has 10, 44. Uh, banjo has five, so that's 49. What am I missing? I'm missing an instrument. No, I'm missing two. I have another mandolin, so there's eight more. What was I at? 49. 49? So that's 57. Seven. Uh, and then um, the uh, dulcimer has four. So 61. I'm trying to think if there's any other instruments that are hanging out there. One, two. That, that seems about it. That, 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 that is pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it would take me like three hours to do them all, I feel. Probably. And like $100 worth of strings or something stupid, probably. I'm just stringing the guitar every month or two. Oh. I guess I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. That, that's timing. <laughs> Hark. <laughs> I hear a football. I, I still picture Gary doing Foley work, like Monty Python style with coconuts and, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Screen door. <laughs> 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 and then there were two. And then there were two. Now we awkwardly stare at each other for the last minute. I know, I don't know. Hmm. I've got no other do nail. Have, what, do you have any kind of manicure, pedicure routine? What is your routine for nail clipping? 
I paint my nails fairly often, so I take care of my fingernails during that process, which is unexciting. Toenails are... Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.